Hey YouTubers, we're gonna I'm gonna show you how to test a radiator cap. And I've done this before, but these are always good examples to show failed ones or how we can go wrong in testing some. So go ahead and let's look at these caps to begin with. You'd see this old one, uh, we put a paint mark on it. And uh, you always kinda wanna compare things. The other thing, we're using a genuine OEM Triumph part here. Uh, there are plenty of aftermarket alternatives on this stuff. But the thing I want you to notice is on this new cap, we have a specification where it says 1.1. Once again, we used OEM, this should be correct. We'll compare it to the manual to make sure, but that's how much pressure that we can put into the caps. We'll convert that to a PSI reading for what 1.1 is. I'll put that in the video here. And then we'll be able to properly test the cap. But before we get to that, I wanna go ahead and get you to notice here, look at these, how they're different. You can see now maybe Triumphs changed the design uh, the problem that I'm concerned about, though, is that the wrapper I got, brand new Triumph, was opened, okay? It was open and restapled. This is another reason you always got to check your parts. It, it might be the right one, I just don't know, but we have to think it through. We can double check our part number and make sure that we have the right part. Let's just get to the video part of actually how to test this. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do what I call test it wrong, is I'm going to take this cap, and I'm going to install it in my tester here. We got a little adapter. You can see all these rubber parts. We've had this before and every mechanic should know that you should always lube these, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and just put it on the wrong way like happens a lot of the time. Everything's dry here. And I wanna show you here. It's actually just pushing the air out right away. It won't seal. Now that could be that the cap is just plain bad. Let's just try the new one quick. Once again, dry, and see if we get anything. Looks like it's holding a heck of a lot better, doesn't it? But yeah. notice how it's dropping down here. So what's happening, it's just, it's not sealing all the way. I want to show you why. If I take it, put this one on again. So we definitely say that this old one's bad. Let's go ahead and we'll go in this bucket of water here. Obviously, you can see the bubbles coming up there, so we know that we don't have a good seal. Just out of curiosity, what I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to get everything wet here and see how much better that gets, okay? You also want to clean your surfaces. Go ahead and make sure there's just not some crap on here. And this cap just very well could be bad. All right, ready? The cap is 100% bad, isn't it? Yep. So let's go ahead and put the new one on. And now with this wet, I bet we're not going to have any leaks whatsoever. Okay, but now in the water, we'll at least be able to see if there's any uh, bubbles as well. It's holding pretty dang good on this one, whether wet or dry. But what I need to do is go to the manual and find out what 1.1 is, and I'll do that right now. All right, just to verify, I went and double-checked the spec. 0.9 would be about 13 PSI, and then 1.1 is 15.95, so say 16. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and pump that up to that. Do you see how, when I, well, I'm gonna do it again, watch this. You'll see how I'm gonna get a burst, and we said we're sealed, right? See how there's nothing in here? Yep. So this is also showing that the radiator cap has the ability to bleed off too much pressure so that we don't build too much pressure in the system. This cap right now is holding 13 easily. You can see when it gets to 15 to 16, it's, it's popping the bubble. Watch this when this needle gets to right here, you'll see the bubble inside the water tank here. I'm gonna try and see if I can get it to hold up. Yeah, it's, it's popping right there. So that is when it will release. What I want to do is I could just leave this, walk away from here and come back in an hour and make sure it's not dropping. Uh, there are specifications that you should only lose like a uh, no less than a, a pound an hour or something like that. But check your service manual. This is a great way to test it. Nowhere in the manuals do they tell you to submerse it in water and just prove that it actually has the ability to release and hold and you'll know your fittings are all good. I mean, you, you got to think about it. You could have leaks here, here, anywhere. If, if you have a failed cap, make sure you put a good one on there and prove the integrity of your tool. 
so you don't misdiagnose. That's my tip of the day. If you like what you see here, would you please share it? I'd love you to keep my platform going here on uh, technical education and uh, um, the ways to be great in your craftsmanship. So keep on wrenching, and we'll see you again in the future. Thanks for being a subscriber and follower of the channel. If you like what you see here, would you please share it? I'd love you to keep my platform going here on uh, technical education and uh, um, the ways to be great in your craftsmanship. So keep on wrenching, and we'll see you again in the future. Thanks for being a subscriber and follower of the channel.